I have written to and spoken with high-level Chinese leaders on multiple occasions, as recent as just a few weeks ago. Until then, all hypotheses on the origins of this, the virus remain on the table. At the same time, the continued politicization of the origins research has turned what should be a purely scientific process into a geopolitical football, which only makes the task of identifying the origins more difficult. And that makes the world less safe. What we're seeing is as customers buy more and more devices for their home, they're becoming more frustrated because they just don't work together that well. So that was the challenge that we undertook is to basically disrupt that space so that the home can be more of a simple plug and play experience where it all just works. Alexa, please turn on all lights. Okay. Lights come on. Hey Siri, turn off all lights. Off. Right. I think it's not just an opportunity, but almost a responsibility for telcos and CSPs to help consumers now bring this down into a simplified plug and play nature. And so that is the vision, is that as a, as a communication service provider, we can actually serve a central role in helping optimize the home experience, making it kind of a utopia. A long night following two intense weeks of discussions as UN member states finalised the first international treaty to protect the high seas. Ladies and gentlemen, the ship has reached the shore. Indeed, it was worth the wait. Activists have praised the historic treaty as a momentous achievement, as it will allow for the creation of marine protected areas in these international waters. The high seas comprise around two-thirds of the world's ocean and almost half the planet's surface. Since they extend up to 200 nautical miles from coastlines, all countries can use them for fishing, shipping and conducting research. But until now, just 1% of these waters have been protected, meaning that marine life in the high seas faces threats such as overfishing, shipping traffic and climate change. Its exact wording has not yet been agreed. But the treaty will require countries to carry out environmental impact surveys of proposed activities on the waters, helping to protect the ocean's precious ecosystems, which create half the oxygen humans breathe and limit global warming by absorbing carbon dioxide. Before it is formally adopted, the agreement will need to be vetted by lawyers and translated into the UN's six languages. Athens is bracing for... And if you put me back in the White House... Their reign is over. Their reign will be over. And they know it. And America will be a free nation once again. We're not a free nation right now. We don't have free press. We don't have free anything. In 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. I am your retribution. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm not going to let it happen. I will totally obliterate the deep state. I will fire. Um, I grew up learning about, we, we called it ecology at the time, <laughs> and so some of us who were born around that time know what I'm saying. <laughs> and, um, and we talked about it in the context of conservation. In fact, I'm going to share with you a very simple story, which is that I went home one day and I said, well, what's, 
Why are conservatives bad, mommy? Because I thought we were supposed to conserve things. <laughs> I couldn't reconcile it. Now I can. <laughs> Right. And while I think a lot of the blame should be put onto, of course, these different pharmaceutical companies, including Pfizer, who's really to blame here? Well, so absolutely Pfizer is liable for colluding with the U.S. government uh, and the Department of Defense in this crime. Okay, so this is a, war, a crime, a war crime, because it's, you know, we're at war. Uh, so Pfizer is complicit in the war crime, should be prosecuted, should be, of course, held liable. But the point I'm trying to make to people, if, you know, if you, if you believe that all of this power, all of this incredible power is, in, is, is uh, exerted by uh, a private pharmaceutical manufacturer, you are incredibly deluded. And, and that's maybe what they want you to believe. Because they want. Wait, let me just get you. You wait. Let me just get you to repeat that and, and clarify here. You think it could be possible that they want us to put all of the blame onto these pharmaceutical companies? Of course, because ultimately uh, they know the lie will be uh, uncovered, and it's already you know about <laughs> say half of the people already realize it's a lie at least to some degree, and maybe even more. So they know that the lie will ev eventually be uh, uncovered, that the truth will come out. There will be some sort of repercussion. At this point, they immediately need to say, "Oh, it's a bad pharmaceutical capitalist company." Uh, they were just too corrupt and wanted too much money. And so they bought off some politicians and some uh, government officials. And therefore, let's go prosecute them. Uh, in which case, what happens is at that point, uh, Pfizer pleads to some minor minor crime. Uh, they set up, uh, they already have shell companies set up for these purposes. They, those will plead guilty. And uh, they will pay some big fine, uh, which the government will take and distribute to themselves. And uh, this will be continued in the future because this this happened already many times before so that's why they're setting them up they're going to throw them under the bus in a manner that doesn't hurt anyone really involved like albert burla and you know they're they're all protected uh and that's what they want people to to focus on not on the actual crime as it happened these lies continue tonight rupert murdoch who has admitted they were lies and said he regretted it, has a special obligation to stop Tucker Carlson from going on tonight now that he's seen how he has perverted and slimed the truth and from letting him go on again and again and again. Not because their views deserve such opprobrium, but because our democracy depends on it. 你的员工也感觉到上海这个城市是很安全的一个城市。But for those who obtain a red code and are in good health, no explanation is given. This is the case for this man, who had no one to appeal to when he just finished quarantine after a trip to a different province. The precautionary measures are reinforcing the Chinese state's surveillance. After analyzing the code of one of these apps, this journalist found that once registered, the user's data was handed over to the police. There's nothing on the app to tell you that the police are in any way involved. It says that this is a government service, but then it doesn't sort of specify beyond that, so it's pretty surprising to then see this beacon that's immediately going to police. Has the pandemic become an opportunity for China to boost surveillance of its citizens? According to the authorities, these are just exceptional measures. Hi, I'm Emma Kisby, Managing Director of Kogo. Kogo is on a mission to empower millions of consumers to understand the impact of their spending on the planet and make sustainable living easy. We believe there is a very powerful opportunity in the combination of technology and data. Kogo has created a solution to make sustainable living easy for consumers and businesses. For consumers, we have an app that helps them express their values through their spend. 
The app enables users to simply link their bank account, tell us what they care about from living wage to getting highly personalised carbon footprints. We can then track their everyday spend and show them the impact and make recommendations and give them ethical nudges to switch their spend to be more sustainable. Koga has been incredibly lucky to collaborate with Santander in the UK on a partnership to bring our solution to the Santander customer base. Through this process, we have been identified to lots of other key decision makers in lots of different markets at Santander, and we look forward to more future collaborations. So from everyone at Kogo, we just want to say thank you for letting us be a part of the Santander X Environmental Challenge. the trendy Roman. Our military assistance mission will have trained more than 11,000 Ukrainian soldiers and by the end of the year trained 30,000 soldiers and all member uh, states express their satisfaction about the results achieved by this training mission and committed to do more, especially when the battle tanks are arriving to Ukraine and the crews of these battle tanks has to be trained. We've heard the comments that have been made in Congress. Look, when we look at the recent economic indicators and we look at the, da the, the data, it is not consistent with a recession or even a precursory period. And the, and the reason why, as you see, unemployment is, the, is at the lowest in 50 years, and that's a record low. Uh, more than 500,000 jobs were created last month, representing a very strong labor market. GDP grew by 2.9 percent just last quarter. And real wages are higher than they were seven months ago. So we believe that households are indeed uh, very strong in a strong position. And household net is above the pre-pandemic levels, and measures of financial distress are below, are below the pre-pandemic levels as well. And so the data, in, the indicators, those economic indicators that I just laid out shows us uh, that, again, we're in a strong position uh, as we move forward. Hola y buenos días otra vez, amigos y amigas. Estoy el corresponsal. Yes, once again, it's your favorite correspondent here. Uh, Hi, Yona, with Grand Theft World Liberty Radio News on the ground. With the developing story here, well, it's been in development for quite some time. It began in Clendon and then it moved on down the river here to Charleston, West Virginia. Here we are at the Dow Chemical West Virginia Operations North Charleston plant. Uh, and just across the river, you can see the methyl isocyanate um, complex where Agent Orange was manufactured. You know, if you need to defoliate half of Southeast Asia, uh, just get your good stuff from West Virginia, right here, folks. Union Carbide Corporation. And there is Carbide Island, a.k.a. Blaine's Island. In the beautiful Great Canal River. That's Canal, not Kanawa or however else you were mispronouncing it. It's Canal. Okay. All right, that's it for now. Moving on. Dr. Fauci was affirmatively told in, told in an email that uh, NIAID had a monetary relationship with the Wuhan uh, Institute through uh, EcoHealth Alliance. He, he was told this in January 27th of 2020. Do you think that Dr. Fauci intentionally lied under oath to Senator Paul when he vehemently denied NIH's funding of gain-of-function research? I think there's no doubt that NIH was funding gain-of-function research. Is it likely that American tax dollars funded the gain-of-function research that created this virus? I think it did, not only from NIH, but from the State Department, USAID, and from DOD. I'm out of time. Thank you very Dr. much. Dr. Redfield, I want to stick with you. you. You have said before that you were locked out of conversations about the lab leak by Dr. Fauci and Dr. Collins. Do you think they kept you out of the conversations because you believe COVID-19 may have come from a lab? 
Yeah, I think I made it very clear in January to all of them why we had to aggressively pursue this, and I let them know as a virologist that I didn't see that this was anything like SARS or MERS because they never learned how to transmit human to human, that I felt this virus was too infectious for humans. There was a lot of evidence that lab actually published in 2014 that they put the H2 receptor into humanized mice so it could infect human tissue. I think, you know, we had to really uh, seriously go after the fact it came from the lab, and they knew that that was how I was thinking, although I thought we had to go after both hypotheses. And I was told later, uh, I didn't know I was excluded. I didn't know there was a February 1st conference call until the Freedom of Information came out with the emails, and I was quite upset as the CDC director that I was exclu excluded from those discussions. Oh, oh. Why would they do this? because I had a different point of view and I was told they made a decision that they would keep this confidential until they came up with a single narrative, which I will argue is antithetical to science. Science never selects a single narrative. We foster, as my colleague here just said, we foster debate. Mm -hmm. And we, we're confident that with debate, science will eventually get to the truth. This was an a priori decision that there's one point of view that we're gonna put, out there, and anyone who doesn't agree with it is going to be sidelined. And as I say, I was only the CDC director, right. and I was sidelined. In a recent Energy and Commerce Oversight hearing, I asked the NIH acting director about the NIH's gross negligence in monitoring the EcoHealth Alliance grant and subgrant to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. He admitted that we might not have had all of the information and research reports from WIV and EcoHealth. He insisted, however, that he was sure that the coronavirus research at WIV was completely unrelated to SARS-CoV-2. With the information we know and the fact that China deleted data and asked NIH to delete data, do you believe that we can have certainty that the virus did not come from the Wuhan lab and that U.S. funding was not used for COVID-19 related research? Yeah, uh, absolutely we can't do that. I will say if you go back and look, it's declassified now, and I'm sure you all have your classified uh, briefings, but the declassified information now, in September of 2019, three things happened in that lab. One is they deleted the sequences was highly irregular. So researchers don't usually like to do that. Second thing they did was they changed the command and control of the lab from the civilian control to the military control. Highly unusual, and I've been involved in dual use labs when I was in the military. And the third thing they did, which I think is really telling, is they let a contractor redo the ventilation system in that laboratory. So I think clearly there was strong evidence that there was a significant event that happened in that laboratory in September. It's now been declassified. You can read it. I'm sure there's more classified information around it. And finally, I'm so glad that Elena Zelenska is here because women are... <clears throat> Women and, and children are the primary victims of conflict and of climate change, and there is no place that unfortunately, tragically shows us that more dramatically than Ukraine today, but there are a lot of other conflicts, a lot of other uh, challenges that we have to uh, take into account as we look at gender apartheid in Afghanistan, uh, the persecution and oppression of girls and women exercising their freedom of choice in Iran and so many other places. It's kind of weird seeing the arms and legs just separate. We have a whole lab full of arms and legs. <clears throat> With bearing in mind that uh, when we did AI Day, uh, this version of Optimus didn't work, work at all. So the rate of improvement here I think is, is quite uh, significant. Um, it's obviously not doing parkour. Uh, but uh, it is walking around, and we have multiple, multiple uh, copies, I suppose, of Optimus. Um, the thing that 
I think Tesla brings the table that others don't have is that we have um, we have the uh, real world AI. We're, we're the most advanced in real world AI. So. you need a single location to get cutting edge information and keep up with the rapidly changing world around us, tune into Grand Theft World, where a forensic historian and a logic professor break down the week's news in depth and in context. There's a ton more there, so go check it out. And don't forget to get your Freedom Vault on the homepage.